Hello there everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. This is a 2012 Ferd F150 XLT. I think it's a uh, extended cab, looks like extended cab. Customer states that it has a shutter slash vibration while accelerating and it appears that uh, there might be a misfire going on with this five liter coyote engine. I think that's a coyote engine, isn't it? Looks like a 5.0. Smells like a 5.0. The sticker says that it's a 5.0. Therefore, it is a 5.0. So it's been in the shop since last night. It came in earlier. Uh, we kind of gave it a quick looky-loo and didn't see anything uh, remarkably concerning except for that battery terminal right there. Uh, what I want to do now, since it's a brand new fresh day, we're going to go ahead, fire this unit up. We're going to take it out of the row ad real quick. We're going to bring the scan tool with us check the check engine light because it does have some trouble codes and then uh, after our test drive we'll come back to the shop make an assessment and see what's going on with this engine's uh engine's difficulty and then we will attempt to make our repair at 168,886.7 miles on the odometer so let's get this scan tool plugged in and fired up flashlight on now i can see what i'm trying to see here because it's dark in this footwell. There we go, scanner's plugged in. Scanner banner. Let's climb on into this unit. Beginning engine starting sequence now. Hmm, what's his problem? The door doesn't stay closed. Oh, the handle's broken, look. The chrome's chipping off and the actual door handle is, is broken. Does it stay closed? There we go, now it stays closed. All right, we've got it pulled up. 2012 Ford F-150, five liter V8, dual overhead cam, it's a doke. And we're going to pull up, let's see here, codes menu, that's what we want. We want engine codes, we're going into the ECM. Memory, let's see what we've got to work with here. Continuous memory codes. Okay, we've got a P0300 random multiple misfires detected. That's a pending DTC. Warning lamp is turned on. So the ECM has requested the mill on. Uh, the other trouble code here, P0308, cylinder eight misfire detected. Okay, so far this seems like it should be a fairly straightforward process. Let's go into data. I wanna see if the scan tool is picking up on any misfire data before we get going and before we reach operating temperature. Sometimes you can have misfires uh, on a cold start only and sometimes they will come in once the engine has reached operating temperature. And there's dust all over my scanning tool. Look at that. It's dirty. She nasty. Oh, I just closed out of the menu. No, don't do that. Hmm. Illegal instruction. I violated the law. Got a warrant. All right, let's let that thing boot back up again. I had to shut her down. It was frozen in time. Anyway, let's back this thing out of the shop right here and uh, go out, take a test drive real quick like and see, uh, see what we can see here. All right, let's get ourselves out in the wild here and put this little truck through its paces a little bit, see what she does. So, so far it's feeling pretty good. I hear no misfires, I see no misfires, I feel no misfires, but I also need to put it in the right gear. Look at that. Riding around in first gear. Operator error. All righty, we're pulling up engine data here. We've got our list and we can already see it's logged a misfire on cylinder one. Uh, looks like it logged one on cylinder number two. Scrolling down, mm, cylinder five, nothing. Cylinder six, nope, seven, nope. And look at that, cylinder eight, the Ocho. 10 must fires in history and one so far on this drive cycle. So it looks like cylinder eight is gonna be our, uh, our primary offender. Let's go ahead, give this some mid-range throttle, a little bit of load. 
There it is, I feel it. Yeah, it feels a little rough. That K and N air intake's kind of throaty sounding. It was like a little loud. Okay, I feel a misfire, definitely. Coming off idle, it went away, but then right here, giving it some throttle, it comes back in. And look here, right there, that two. So the ECM has logged another misfire event on cylinder number eight. All right, so we're looking primarily at eight. One on, was it two and two, and one on four? Let's go back and recheck real quick. Make sure no additionals have showed up. And we've just got one on two that's now registering. Nope, one and two. One and two have a miss, and cylinder eight logged a miss. But I really like how this thing keeps track of misfires over time. That helps us to uh, develop a trend and observe a pattern. So number eight is our primary offender. Let's go back to the shop and uh, take an inspection of, uh, of that cylinder. We'll check out the coil, we'll check out the wires, we'll check out the fuel injector wiring harness, and we will pull the spark plug and check that out as well. Doge. Here we go. Are we ready? Yeah, this thing's real throaty sounding. It's that cold air K and N. All right, back at the shop. We have seen enough to uh, at least give us some direction here. Let's go do some uh, physical invasive inspections. Nosing back in. There we go. Yeah, I'm I stole Dave's stall today. He's over there now. We switched sides. Because this one was parked and that one needed a rack. So we switched sides. There we go. Parking the auto. And pew, powering down. Broken handle. And let's not smack the lift. Stay. The door wants to bang into the lift over there. We can't have that. There we go. It's not gonna work. I know, I know how to make it work. Back the truck up. I don't think I need to raise this up just yet. Let's try that. There, much more better. Now we may pop in the hood. All right, moving on around to the front side here. Let's get this bonnet reopened. Bird. And if memory serves, I believe cylinder eight is that one. Is that correct? Yeah, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, 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 wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is cylinder eight. Way back there, that's the one right there. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull that coil out of there. We're going to pull the number eight spark plug out. I'm going to get the spark plug gapping measuring tool device. We're going to check the gap on that plug, make sure it's not cracked, broken, full of water things of that nature, and then uh, we'll make a, a further assessment from that point. Alrighty, coming in with the new Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod, pocket screwdriver with a magnet on the end, available at RaymanRaysRepairs.com. End of shameless self-promotion. All right, so we're coming in here, we're gonna pop this little red locking tab back and then it's gonna fly out and break. That was cool. Now it's broken off inside the connector, yay! That's not what I wanted to do. The locking part stayed and the lock removing part broke. That's fun. Now I gotta try to pick this thing out. Oh, did I get it? Yep, sure did, got her. Cool. Here, let's extract our little broken bit in there. Come here, broken bit. Come out, we no longer need you. Are the rest of these going to break off? Let's try the next one real fast. Yeah, that one didn't break. That was cool. Snap that guy loose. Let's try the next one real fast, like. And yeah, that one didn't break. Not yet, anyway. Come on. 
there we go okay so they're they're coming off i broke one but it is what it is anyways let's go ahead and get that coil dug out of there i think we needed eight millimeter the ocho and then that coil should pop right on out all right we've got an eight millimeter deep well just for some extra ratchet clearance here let's pull these eights out a lot better than the five fives that they used to have And we'll get this one too while we're here. Why not? It's a more invasiver inspection than what we had discussed. But that's fine. That's pretty clean looking. Look at that. I wouldn't think those had 180,000 on them. But the odometer says that they do. Let's get this last one out. This is the one in question. So just in case those spark plugs are new or something, I'm gonna leave this coil aside. I'm gonna set it off all the way to the right over here. That way, if I don't feel we have a spark plug problem, we can do something about that coil. So now, let's go down in that hole in number eight right there, get that plug out, and take a look at it. Okay, let's switch it out to an extension on the uh, Electron ratchet with the universal and the spark plug socket. I think, perfect clearance, there we go. Let's break her loose, spin it out. See why we need to have a, a universal joint? If this was just straight ahead, the head of this ratchet would have been smashing into the firewall right here, in which case uh, it would not be able to unthread and then uh, we would have captured our tool between the engine and the firewall. That's not okay. Extraction. What do we have here? What are we looking like? Yeah, I've seen better. Not looking totally horrible, but let's get the tool out and measure the gap real quick, like, and see what we've got. Oh, holy smokes. Never mind. I found it. There's the problem. We don't need to measure any gap. Here, take a look at this right here. Look. Let me flip that around look at that right right there look at that huge crack in the porcelain you see that right there this spark plug is split in half dang i did not expect to find that but yeah she's broken right here right down the middle almost from the base all the way up to the top hmm looks like fresh lubricant okay well, while we're here examining this, how's that uh, electrode looking in there? Yeah, it's not horrible. I don't know if these are original or if they've been replaced or not, but there is definitely some wear going on inside of this plug, along with the actual physical damage on the outside. Yep, oh, that's a good view of it. Look at that, things tore up. Okie dokes. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and order a set of spark plugs and while those are on the way, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the rest of these units and see what, the, uh, see what the rest of them are looking like. Maybe they're cracked, maybe they're not. But on that note, I do not think I'm gonna need a coil. I'm pretty sure that coil is gonna be okay. All right, cylinder number seven. Let's dig this plug out. Let's see what this one's looking like. Unclicks. Oh, that was kind of tight. See what we have here. Are we broken? And survey says this one is not broken. Okay. Well, that was not a misfiring cylinder, but we don't change one spark plug, we change them in a set, and that's how this is gonna go. Let's dig out number five. Disconnect you. You know, we've got a bunch of lubricant here on the end. Yeah, somebody must have replaced these once before. These don't look like 180,000 mile plugs. Flipping it around here, the anode and electrode. We see some burn action going on, a little bit of wear, but nothing crazy like that number eight plug. Okay, moving on again. Let's get, let's get this hose out of the way and dig out this last connector here 
without breaking it. There we go. Push that guy down. Pry bar it up and out. There we go. And back in again with the Ocho. Come here, coil. Looking really clean, too. That's also in good shape. Okay. Number five. Cylinder number five, spark plug number four. And that one, also not broken. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Okay, cool beans. All right, I've seen enough. Let me go get those things ordered real quick and then we can pull this other side apart. All right, guys, we're good to go. I have uh, received authorization to replace these components. So let's go ahead and dig out the remaining plugs on cylinder bank number one over here. And we can inspect these units and see what they're looking like. Let's go ahead and pop this uh, connector loose. There we go, there's that one. They're kind of interfering with the wiring harness a little bit. Oh look, someone's been here before. Little red thing on this one is missing. Let's make sure it's engaged. Not really. Hmm. Now oh, I felt it snap. Okay. Just want to make sure this thing can't back off because this is cylinder one, and one did have a misfire. Just want to make sure that tab is locking. Yeah, it's locked. Okay. Release. Push that back. That is able to lock into place. If it wasn't going to lock, I'd be uh, reluctant to leave it alone. They can back themselves off if they don't snap in. There's number three. And number four, flashlight, there it is. The gravity of the flashlight. Number four, out back, right behind this bit of harness here. Kind of tough to see. I'll try to get you some luminaries in there. There you go. Let's go ahead and pull this little guy back without breaking it. There we go. Got it. Sorry, my hand was in the way. That's all you saw. Anyways, back in with the 8 mil. Let's pull the nuts, bolts, fasteners. Next. That's cylinder three. Let's move over here to number two. And numero uno. Peel back our, uh, our coil here. Another fine looking coil. Not suspected of being a problem. Come here, coil number two. No surprise, looking good. Next one. There she comes, there she goes. I meant to say here she comes or there she goes. I did it at the same time. It's a linguistic error. Let's pry driver this last one up and out. Pop goes the coil. Okay, that's all four on this side. We will follow suit with the big green ratchet and pull out the remaining plugs in here. Unclicks. Okay, what do we have here? Let's 
see what we're working with. Looks like nothing is broken. No split. Oh, no, 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 no. Look, hairline crack right here. There's a crack right, right there forming in this one. Right there. Hope you guys can see that. There's kind of a glare coming off the light. Yep, I see a crack from here. Running right through here. And the uh, electrodes looking similar to the other ones. Dave, I found two of them that are broken. Hmm. One of them's very split and one of them's not so split. What you got there? I got a broken one from the oh. other day. You see that I've one? I've never seen this happen. The porcelain is separate and the porcelain's cracked. If you look at the electrode on the bottom, that whole piece is loose. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look right there. That's crazy. What did this come out of? Uh, Toyota. T Nova. TRQ. Huh. It thinks it's a Ford spark plug. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Dang. You can save that one. That's a, that's a rare failure. Yeah, it thinks it's a brown booted Ford. You know the ones you had to have the special tool to extract it after it broke off from oh, the yeah. cylinder head? Yeah. I still have the tool. How's this one looking? Any cracks in it? Nope. That one's good. Okay. Last one. Cylinder number one. Let's get this guy broken free. And we have a similar situation right here okay waiting on parts all righty so while we're here and while i'm waiting on those parts to arrive i'm going to take this boroscope right here and we're going to run this thing down into each one of uh of these spark plug holes here i want to see just how dirty it is inside of this engine we're checking the combustion chamber. That one's not looking terrible. Let's see if I can't make this thing fold over a little bit. Get some sideways view. Okay, that one's a top dead center. Let's back it out. Go over to the next. Oh, I left a spark plug in there. Look at that. Oops. I must have missed one. Don't know how I did that. Here. Let's just pull this thing out real quick like. Yeah, that's something must have distracted me in my head. There's the last one. Okay. Don't know how I did that. Anyway, let's go down in this hole now and see what this one's looking like. Alright, they're not fuel soaked. Decent amount of carbon in there. I do see some some debris. Let's check the next one. Yeah, fairly decent. A little bit of carbon buildup right here on top of the piston. You guys see all that? Nothing super extreme. Okay, let me try to get one down in that last hole in the back. It's always the hardest one to get into. They're not designed for easy access. Okay, well, other than the dirt I just dropped in there and a little bit of carbon, it's not too shabby. All right, real quick, let's move on over and just check the other side. Couldn't hurt. Okay, let's go down. Cylinder number five right here. Let's see what's in that one. Ah, we can see the valve reliefs on the piston. Upper right hand corner and a little bit on the left hand side. A little bit of carbon in there. Nothing crazy. Next one. 
again, we see valve reliefs and a little bit of carbon. This is going to be cylinder seven. And again, a little bit of carbon buildup. Nothing crazy. And the last one, I wonder if we're going to find some heavy buildup on this one because it was the misfiring cylinder. Let's see what we get inside all the way down. And yep, look at that. Huge buildup on carbon on uh, on cylinder number eight right here. That's from the uh, prolonged engine misfires. You see right there where it's flaked off and then around that it's all caked in. Okay, so now we are on our waiting game until we get some parts. I know what we can do while we wait. Let me find this one. That's the one I want. Air intake valve and uh, combustion chamber cleaner and then some fuel system cleaner. I'm going to take this can right here, the 44K, that's going to go straight into the fuel tank. That's going to remove moisture from the fuel system and it's going to run the cleaning detergent through the injector rails, through the injectors, and it's going to help to clean out the injectors. This other bottle right here, the intake valve and combustion chamber cleaner, that's designed to break away that carbon that we saw back there on cylinder number eight and anything that's building up on top of the valves uh, on the uh, the intake side of those valves, uh, this will also help to clean that stuff off as well. So ideally, we're gonna want this can to be able to coax its way through, coax its way through the entire uh, engine intake system. So we wanna connect it to the intake stream somewhere. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bottle and dump it into a delivery vessel, kind of like an IV at the hospital. It's gonna hang from the hood here and it's got a vacuum line. Uh, it's actually a pressure line, but there's a nozzle and a line. And we're gonna run that line somewhere into this intake, probably through a vacuum source, which I'm thinking this one right here would be good because that runs right into the intake manifold just behind the throttle body. So gravity, lots of gravity. So I'll connect my nozzle here to this hose and then we can pump that solution in and it's gonna run through the entire engine and uh, help to remove some of that carbon deposit. Plus at 180,000 miles, it couldn't hurt. So let's retrieve all oh, this uh, can, of, can of lizard lotion. It's an upgrade from the snake oil. We're using lizard lotion now. So we're gonna take our cans of lizard lotion. I'm gonna install the first uh, stage in the fuel tank and then we'll prep this other larger can for delivery after we get some spark plugs to install. They're not here yet. All right, so some quick stabby stabby action here. We'll pop the top and the fun don't stop. Don't sue me, Pringles. Nope, just tastes better. How much do you think Pringles paid these people? Maybe it's a can you like. No, it's not the can. Now check this out, here's where it gets cool. I have a specialty funnel that fits over the can, look at that. So now, all we have to do is uh, halfway circumnavigate our furred over here. We can install our can directly into the fuel tank system. Oh look, it's a capless fuel tank for a non-gas cap system. Dump that in there, let it ride. Got it, cool beans. Pull that unit back out. Let her drip dry back in the can and I need to wipe down some uh, some some spillage. Got some spillage going on there. This can go right here. There we go. Nice and shiny. I'm gonna go ahead and fetch the delivery device for that uh, particular fluid. Hang that right there. That's our unit. What we need to do is connect some shop air to this. It's gonna pressurize this vessel and we can see there's still some pressure in there. But we're gonna fill this little vessel full of the cleaner. Then we're gonna pressurize it with shop air. And then we can install it through this nozzle into that tube while the engine is running. Actually, you know what? I have a better way of delivering that. 
you see the nozzle on the end of that tool it's got a it's got a bunch of little fine teeny tiny microscopic holes in there and when that fluid is pushed through it it atomizes it it comes out as a very fine mist uh, my issue is is if i were to install that uh that misting nozzle into the hose there's a chance that the fluid that comes out of that nozzle will re-liquefy in the hose and it can pour into the intake uh, as a liquid and then it'll just pool up at the bottom and uh, and cause us some issues so I, I actually think i'm going to try to run it through this entire tube so what i'll do is pop this tube off of the air filter right here if i can get away with it and it will just straighten this nozzle out and extend it in past the mass airflow sensor and we can use the velocity of that air to carry the mist into the engine see how this is gonna go here you know what let's do this there look at that and you know what while this is apart i'm gonna clean this thing out and maybe re-oil it or something okay so here what we'll do i'll take this thing outside near the hose and i'll spray it full of a k and filter cleaner let it sit for a little while and then we can hose the thing out uh, as per the directions on the k and bottle so we'll just give this like a spray this stuff's supposed to just loosen the dirt spray it in there nice and deep like Soak it, let it hang out for 10, 15 minutes or something, and then we'll come back and hose it out. And maybe at that point, I'll have some plugs. So while this thing hoses out, we can let her dry. There we go. Good. And then by the time we're done with the plugs, it should be dry and I can put it back on. That will be the plan. In the meantime, I suppose, we can clean out that throttle body. Oh yeah, she's super dirty in there too. Dang, all right. So I'm out of lizard lotion uh, throttle body spray, but I do have some sea foam. I'll just go in there and give this kind of a wipe down with the sea foam real quick. It'll help to start breaking up anything that's like deposited inside of this throttle body. And then once we uh, spray the spray through with the nozzle, it'll clean the rest of it out. So that's, that should be all I need to do right now, right here. That's good. We'll put the hose back on. Very nice. Several days later, I have some spark plugs. It wasn't really several days. It's been like 20 minutes. Anyway, I've got a set of eight spark plugs here. They are the Motocraft spark plugs. Part number SP548X or SP548. Don't know what the X is for. Somebody in Fordland knows what the X is for, but I do not. Let's uh, see. Those numbers do not compare because that's a Ford part and that's a Motocraft part. Uh, I know they're similar, but they're also different. Or are they? Well, that's weird. So they do have the same part number on the plug. Yes, yeah, CYFS12F1. And same thing on this plug over here. That's odd. So why is that different from this number? Oh, I see it. We got another number, another set of numbers down here. So that's the Motocraft box number. That's the Ford part number. And then there's some other numbers in there too. Okay, like I said, I don't uh, quite understand the Ford part number system. It's not my forte. Anyways, let's go ahead and get these things installed. We'll, uh, we'll start from this side and then hit that side, and then we can get our cleaner system set up and run this stuff through. See how she runs afterwards. All right, spark and plug socket coming in. Let's get our new plug inserted. Drop that unit down in the hole. Well, we're not gonna drop it. We're gonna lower it gently down in the hole because if we drop it, we could smash the end of the electrode and break it. That would be bad. And I'm coming in with the electron ratchet. I'm not going to tighten this spark plug with this ratchet. I'm just using that to uh, run down the threads. And then she stops and we're good. Pull it back out. Just 
switched out to a Normular ratchet. And I'll use this to uh, bring this thing up on some final torque action. There we go. That was tight. Next. You know, I cannot help but wonder if just doing this manually without the the ratchet is faster. Because I have to factor in the time to change change the tool as well. Let's see what happens here. Nah. I don't think it really matters. Next one coming in, drop her down, spin it around, give it the twist. Any day now. It's taking forever. There we go. More. Click. Okay, got that one. That's three down on this side. Let's get uh, number four in position down there. Pop that in the plug or in the socket. Pop the plug in the socket. Drop her down, spin it around. See, this one is faster. I can use physics to assist me. Or geometry, rather. You can use geometry to assist. Ooh, kicks. That one's good. Beautiful. Now, let's grab some dielectric lubricant, throw some uh, electron containing grease inside of these boots, and we'll drop these down in place. All right, we'll just grab the whole bunch here, get them all prepped up and insert lubricant now. You don't need a boatload, just a, just a wee little bit there. Coat the end of the plug with. So let's drop these coils back into their positions. There we go. Next. Last one out back. That's the hard one. It's not really actually terribly hard. There seems to be some access on this engine. Sometimes uh, we're not so fortunate. We put in our eight mil bolts. I'll run by these guys real quick with that uh, quarter inch ratchet and snug everybody down. There we go. Time to make it tight. Click. Next click. And uno mas on this uh, front one here. Good. So, we'll take our connecting units and snap these guys back into place. Can you guys see? No. Click. There was one audible click. That's the uh, tab on the connector engaging the coil. Click. Good. All right. All four of those guys are on. Moving on over to the other side. Let's get the remaining four. All right. I'm re redoing my strategy on this one. I'm, I'm using the, uh, the electric one. There's no space back there for hand flangey movement. So we're just going to sneak our way in with the uh, with the green ratchet, spin the threads down.
See, you will find in multivariable calculus that there are often a number of different solutions for any given problem. And one may be right in one particular instance, but maybe not exactly right in another similar instance. I don't know if that was like a, a mathematics topic or if that's a philosophical. It sounded more philosophical than mathematical. Definitely grammatical. Now none of those are torqued. They're just threaded down until they stop at the taper on the plug. That's all that they've done. For now. Okay, where's my ratchet in my hand? That's a flashlight rolling down a frame rail. <clears throat> Tight. Click. And last one out back. Re-click, there we go. All right, got them all. Now, back to the coils and the lubricant and then we'll get those coils shoved out in the holes. Come here, coil, come with me. Give that a spurt. I'm running low on my can of dielectric. You know, I've had this can for, I think, 18 months. And I've been using it constantly, consistently, consistent, con consistently, constantly. Or I've been constantly consistent. There's, that's your grammar for the day. How about that? Constantly consistent. That's the one. Next coil. Move that connector out of the way. Another. That's cylinder number two. And I don't know where I put... There it is. Same place I lose everything right in front of me anyway four bolts dropping those units into their homes one more here one more there down in the hole and out back last one now where's my red ratchet red ratchet red ratchet where are you eight mil clicks Good. So now, let's get our connectors reconnected. Did you make the snap sound? Yeah. Yeah, that's in. It was a very light snap. It wasn't crisp like the others. Get on there. That was clicking it like it should be. Last one out back. Come on, get on there. There we go. Clickage. Little red guys, little safety clicks, or safety clips, not clicks, clips. Those are in position except for number one and number eight because I broke number eight and we don't have number one. So now, let's get all these goodies out of here. Let's back her up some. We're gonna refill that bottle full of uh, lizard lotion right there. Pump that into the engine at about 2,000 RPM. 
and uh, when we're done with that, we'll go out and take it on a drive. Okay, so up here at our little uh, delivery vessel, let's figure out how to dump the pressure out of this. Yeah, I can't open that with pressure in the system. I believe if we do this, we will lose our pressure. Valve opening. Pressure coming down. Yeah, it's just spraying out of the end of the nozzle there. You hear it? Out of its teeny tiny little weeping holes. Open. Open says me. I'm just gonna open it while there's pressure in it and see what happens. Ooh, that stinky cleaner. There we go. Okay, cleaner solution coming in. Conveniently, the can is the same size as the bottle. Okay, can of lizard lotion coming in here. We'll dump that right in through the top. Fill it on up. Glug, glug. We've got to make sure we put the cap back on this because, like I mentioned, this uh, this delivery device here is pressurized. If we do not put it on, it's just going to bubble out of the top and make a huge mess, and we don't want to do that. Let's get our lid back in place here. And... Please thread on. What are you doing? There. Okay. Now, we need to take our little nozzle here. See how I had it kind of at this little bend? We're gonna straighten that bend out. So now this hose has got just like a straight shot. And I'm gonna run this nozzle into this uh, intake tube, but I wanna get it past the mass airflow. I don't wanna run this cleaner over the mass airflow sensor. So I'm gonna measure this by hand. We're gonna just run this hose in all the way until the edge of the hose, or at the edge of this hose here. So I'm gonna keep my, my finger in this position. Now see where the nozzle is? We want to be able to make that turn so we'll just bend this to emulate that turn like so and i'll just insert this inside and pass the mass airflow and now that nozzle is in the hose right about here in this position so let us go fetch the shop air hose we will supply air to this get that system pressurized we'll bring the engine up to temp after we restock it and then uh, we can deliver all of this cleaner into this 5 liter V8. So, let us restock things the engine. Good opportunity for a, a misfire check as well. Beginning engine restocking sequence now. Nice. She's smooth. Okay, looking good. Very good. Seems you're running well. I need to get my flashlight off of that exhaust manifold over there because that's how you, uh, you melt your flashlight. Look at that. All right, we're coming back into the cabin with a throttle stop lever. This is gonna hook into the steering wheel right here. And it's like a caulk gun where you just squeeze it and it extends the rod. And at the end of the rod, we'll, we will place that on the accelerator pedal. Like so, run it down and get some accelerator pedal depression action here. And that's gonna raise our engine RPM. We wanna bring it up to, let's call it like 1800, 2000. See if we can get there with this uh, crude rudimentary device. There she is. Don't go anymore, stay right there, right there. Oh no, it went too far. Watch this. We'll turn the steering wheel some. It's gonna change the rod length. And that should bring us down. There we are, 18, 1900. Good. Okay, valve is off at the bottom. We are off. No pressure, lid is on. Solution is full, applying the power supply and 60 psi and again down below on the output side zero because the valve is in fact closed 
a few moments later and we're looking like we are at operating temperature gauge is right in the middle 2000 rpm let's go ahead and introduce the cleaning solution so hit our valve open am i opening it the wrong way yeah i was i'm silly it's going so let's go check our stream okay we can see the mass airflow sensor right there in the middle we can see the hose coming through what we do not see is our spray let's extract this hose a little bit as long as we don't spray the mass airflow we should be fine here yep see that spray right there see the mist mystifying let that ride for a while all right okie dokes we are now in the middle of a waiting game so we're gonna sit here and stare at this fluid level for a while when this thing drops all the way down uh, our operation here will be complete so a couple things I didn't mention is every now and then about every 30 40 seconds we gotta come over here and give this thing some wide open throttle. That way it can take a huge gulp of whatever mist is in there and really, really give it a good soak on the inside. That's what we like. Let's get that RPM back up. Too much back up. Alright guys, our bottle is nearly empty. Let's head back into the cabin, check out our temperatures, give it a couple more throttle blurbs here. Big ones. More bigger earth. Very good. Alright. So now we're gonna bring her down to idle, shut this system down. Powering down that unit. Let's go ahead, get a little bit more throttle real quick. There might be some, some of that fluid hanging out inside of that intake tube. We're gonna get all that stuff out of there. See our fans are running. We've got some heat going, this is good. Let's go ahead and pull this nozzle all the way out. Very nice. All right. Now we'll take our delivery vessel, put this thing away, and we'll get that intake uh, filter back together. Oh, I also learned that I am not going to oil that k and filter because it says on the filter, this is a synthetic filter. Do not oil. And since I can read, I'm going to follow the, the directions here. Powering down. Yeah, look here. It says so right there do not oil synthetic filter written down do not oil all right we're in home stretch territory now let's get this uh filter back in position here slip the grooves in you can slide the tube over get the hooks back out because they were stuck snap this thing back in position Get on there, please. What are you doing? It's reluctant to snap. There, snappage complete. Let's tighten down our hose clamps one more time, and then uh, we'll get out on the road and retest drive this thing. So we have this one hose clamp right here, and I took another one loose down at the throttle body side. That way I could hinge this, uh, this tube to a more desirable angle. There we go. So let's go over there and get that last one a little bit tight here. Let's push it in, hold it there, and clamp this unit back together. Come on. A little bit more. There we go. Clamp clickage. All right. So far, so good. Ooh, you know what? I forgot. 
to do something about that. Hang on a minute. I can't leave that alone. I can't stand that. That's not good. This is like a blast from the past action too. I very rarely uh, feature the battery terminal cleaning services uh, on the channel. I kind of killed it on the last uh, or last year during the channel. And I even had a boatload of that kind of stuff going on on the second channel. Uh, battery cleaner acid detector. That's what I want. The NOCO stuff. Yeah. Battery cleaner acid. Yeah, that's the one. These two. Cleaner and corrosion preventative. Shake me down. It's like a wiping down, but different. It's yellow, so you know it's good. Let that soak in there nice and deep like. Okay, let's give this just a little bit of scrubbing action with a wire brush here. Uh, taking care to not ground the wire brush to anything grounded because these wires will make contact and that would be well, not okay. So then you have glowing, current carrying, melting, wire brush wires and that would just be bad all right corrosion is gone let's give it a rinse goodbye little beans okay let's head out hit the road real quick i'll come back and spray some protector on this uh, after we're done driving so let's back up our stuff here get our hood closed and we're out of here beginning test drive procedure now so this thing may or may not have some immediate misfire action going on. It depends on just how much, yeah, it depends on how much of that cleaner stuff is uh, built up inside. Get some throttle action. Oh yeah, I feel misfires happening right now. Okay, good to go here back this unit on out yeah what will happen is uh, during the shutdown period after you're done running cleaner through this anything that's like uh, uh, on the walls of the intake runners or on top of the valves or anywhere in the throttle body that stuff can re pull back up and then when you go to start it it starts sucking up a concentrated uh, level of the cleaner and it doesn't really want to run because that cleaner is not combustible you guys say it's kerosene or some nonsense like that but it's not because it's not combustible and kerosene is combustible so there and somebody's gonna be like well if you look at the mechanical elements of the msds you're gonna find that it's only one molecule carbon chain uh, off from actual kerosene so therefore it's kerosene oh look what i did it's in manual drive again stuck in first gear there we go and we're off the way is clear we're gonna baby it a little bit around the block, no major throttle. And then when we get on that bridge over there, we're going full wide open throttle. We're gonna let her eat. Here, while we're cruising, let's go ahead in the scanner tool here and close or uh, clear out those trouble codes. So we're back in the codes menu and memory codes and continue. Oh, I pulled up codes, I wanted to clear them. That's what I get for trying to scan and drive. It's fine though, if you think that's bad, you should have seen us at the dealership when we rode around with laptops and stuff. All right, more steam. I hear a little bit of pinging and spark knock. That's some of that cleaner in there being digested. And we're steady rolling into the throttle. Good power band. Full throttle is uh, right here. And she's moving. Beautiful. That was flawless. All right, let me hit my turning lane here. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna flip her around, do one U-turn right here in this intersection, and then we'll do one more full throttle pull up and over the bridge. Let's see, clearing trouble codes at our red light. Continue, warning, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it erases all memory, got it. Clear codes, engine on or running, got it. Self-test, codes cleared. Light is off. So real quick, I need to also clear out keep alive memory if that feature is still 
available here. Mm, let's see. All right, back up and over the other side. While I was at the light, I pulled up the misfire counts and we're coming into full throttle right here and we have zero misfires on cylinder eight. And it looks like the other cylinders are also looking pretty clear. I believe this is a confirmed kill. That's a fix. Successful diagnosis. The misfire is gone. We found the damage and this operation is soon to be complete. So all I've got left to do at this point is head back to the shop, get this thing parked, and we are out of here just in the nick of time. It's 4.44 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. I close at five, we're all done. I'm headed back to the shop, I'm gonna pack it up. So having said all that, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to let me know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. Don't forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, every one of you have yourselves an absolutely fantastic day. See you guys later. In a video, in a day, in deferred, in a misfire, end of transmission.